right? That's where we're going. Let's see. Gotta zoom out. Right, that's you don't press right click to zoom out. Yep, Mordona. Let's just teleport straight there. All right. Talk to the, everyone around and then Grahatia. I take it you have news to share? So do I. I. I'm pleased to see your mission was a success, and in no small part due to the Bonanza. Kryle's back too. I wonder what was decided at the council. The large lowborn presence <laughs> detected. Wonderful news, Brillian. Totaro contacted Sid on our behalf, and he is on his way here, even as we speak. While we wait, I should like very much to hear what transpired at the Alliance Council. Would you be so kind, Kryle? I can't imagine it's good. As you know, the meeting was convened to discuss how best to respond to the recent events in Garlemald. According to intelligence from our Doman allies, the War of Succession rages on, and the Empire remains without a leader. Amidst the chaos, the Imperial Legions in the provinces have begun to move independently of the Motherland. Of greatest concern of us is the Third, a Legion design, a Legion aligned with Lord Nevra, Nerva. It appears they have received substantial financial backing from House Brutus. Brutus, aren't they the ones who took in Yatsuyu and Asahi? This bodes well. Xenos' movements, meanwhile, remain shrouded in mystery. We're hoping that Thancred and Urianje will be able to shed some light on his activities when they return. Until such a time as they do, the Allied leaders feel it would be unwise to intervene in the conflict, and so, thanks in part to the Imperial withdrawal of Gimult, Gimult, I, I think that's how you say that, they have decided to turn their attention to the primal problem once more. Working with, the f with friendly factions among the Beast Tribes, they have hoped to reopen dialogue and explore new and avenues for peace. Given the timing, I suspect they wish to put their respective houses in order ahead of the decisive clash with the Empire. Whatever their intent, this is not a problem easily solved. Lominsons, in particular, struggle in their efforts, and Alphanod and Shtola have been called upon to aid them. So long as we are dealing with the Tempered, I'm afraid no amount of dialogue will avail us. But if we can develop a treatment for tempering, then anything is possible. Which is why we must succeed. And on that cheery note, why not make yourselves comfortable in the Dawn's respite? I'll show Sid in as soon as he arrives. We've made the respite cozier than ever. You're going to love it. I understand you took a little trip to Azza's Law. Raha made himself useful, I trust. I mean, yeah, he did everything. Well, except for me getting that crystal. Let's see. Anyone else in here to talk to? As important as Gabu is to me, I know only too well how much more is at stake here. A cure could change the whole world. Sid, at long last. Blip, boop, warning. His science is exhibiting elevated blood pressure. Well, it must be his old age.
And also Biggs, too. Sid. Forgive us for not coming to see you sooner, my friend. As you may have heard, we have had our hands full. In our defense, you are up rather early. I was under the impression you'd be slumbering a while longer. Oh, I would have been, had you not fulfilled your promise. I still struggle with the idea. From where I stand, the secrets of traveling time and space seem exactly as unfathomable unfathom as they ever did. But if an alternate version of myself has already laid them bare, I dare say that frees me up to concentrate on other endeavors. Speaking of which, you wanted my help with something. What is it? <laughs> the music. The violin part, Shadowbringers. And now we can start riding home. Okay. Well, well, a treatment for tempering, and for the next step you need to find the password to this Alligan's report. Hmm. Just so, with nary a clue to guide us, we could be here forever and still not guess correctly, and thus we turn to you. Well, I'd love to say that we could help you, so I will. Once suitably configured, a magic terminal should... Make short work of identifying the password. I knew I could rely on you. Now, anticipating that it might be of use, I took the liberty of borrowing a tombstone from Rambros. It contains an elegant dictionary. Oh, that'll be very useful. Good thinking. I'll transfer the information to a terminal and set it to work right away. So we'll just start doing some... uh dictionary attacks on it, and then we'll just get in. Ah, looks like it's finished. Let's see. Freedom. The password is freedom. Through technology? Ha! Huh. Short and simple, just as I said. Would you care to do the honors, your highness? I would, my lady. Tips Fedora. Node. Open the report entitled Iconic Corruption and Overview. Password Freedom. Password accepted. Blue. Opening report. This report seeks to provide an overview of the mechanism by which icons corrupt and bind men to their will. The phenomenon we call corruption refers to the alteration of the aether of the soul. We know. Said aether ordinarily exists in equilibrium, no one element being more prominent than, the, than another. But when a subject is exposed to aether of an icon, this changes, their soul taking on the properties of the entity in question. Yeah, I know that guy. By way of an example, 
Exposure to the aether of the fiend Sephiroth would cause a subject's aether to become aligned with the element of earth. Now oh, that makes sense. So we have to rebalance their soul, essentially. As a consequence, the subject would attain heightened affinity with the earth aspected magics, as well as preternatural levels of endurance. Repeated exposure would further enhance these traits, ultimately altering the subject's very flesh. Oh, okay, that's interesting. The changes undergone by the subject are not solely attributed to the elemental alignment, however. Further testing has determined that the subject's soul becomes um umbrally charged or stagnant during the process. This stagnation of the soul has the effect of, of diluting the sense of self, rendering the subject vulnerable to the will of the icon, the thoughts of whom come to consume their entire existence. In this manner do the corrupted become worshippers of the icon, their prayers serving to further empower the entity. Having discerned the mechanism of icon corruption, my colleagues and I set out to develop the material capable of shielding one from its effect, an endeavor in which we are successful, albeit at great cost. In the course of testing, many of my assistants, good men and women all, fell victim to corruption, and in accordance with protocol, they were sum summarily put to death. I subsequently submitted a proposal to investigate potential cures for corruption, but, out, but it was rejected, deem non-essential by Lord Amon. Though I knew it would be fruitless, I protested the decision, and for my in imperatence, I have been stripped of rank and title, and will shortly be expelled from this facility, of course he was. In all likelihood, this report will be expunged from the archives. Nonetheless, I record it in hope that one day someone will undertake will undertake to do that which I could not, and to find a cure for the victims of iconic corruption. End recording. So, not even the Alligans were able to find a cure. Or rather, were not given the chance to do so. One cannot help but wonder what motivated Lord Amon's decision. More importantly, this confirms that stagnation of the soul is indeed the problem, and Angelo can remedy that. True, yet were we simply to reanimate a tempered soul, I fear it would do not to diminish the individual's fanatical faith. Indeed, it may well intensify it. No. We somehow need to suppress the primal's hold over the subject at the same time, or risk them re remaining its thrall. If we could only make them remember who they were, so that's there's no point in reviving their souls unless we can also restore their sense of self. But of course, memory transference. The process has the effect of compartmentalizing memories, separating them into manageable bundles, if you will. By adapting the technique, it may be possible to achieve selective reanimation, that is, limit the effects to only those memories that existed prior to tempering. Through thus restoring the sense of self, we could theoretically drown out the enticements of incitements, yeah, incitements false of false faith, which had become which had come to dominate the individual's thoughts. I see. The theory seems sound, and our experience treating the light corrupted would help us to identify suitable memories for reanimation. But are you confident you can adapt memory transference as required? I seem to recall you at your attempts to do so while trying to bring us home culminated in literal blood wedletting. 
I was gonna say blood wedding, no, but that's a warrior skill. They did. You are right. Despite my best efforts, I could not recreate the mechanism, and I concede that the rather clumsy compromise I reached would not provide the basis for a cure. Then perhaps it's better that we consider another approach. Your doubts are understandable, but this time I believe we have reason to be confident. You see, nodes such as this were built with the ability to simulate magics. Which leads me to believe that it may be capable of performing simulations of transference techniques. If so, we would be able to conduct years worth of tests within the space of a few days. So they've got machine learning. Okay. Hmm. In theory, it would be, it would be no different from how we identified the password. But it'll take more ca calculating power. A lot more. I honestly couldn't say whether our equipment would be up to the task. Tell me, Sid. Why do you suppose Owen locked the report behind a password? To keep it from prying eyes, of course. Why else? Wait. A password that could be guessed by anyone with leisure in a dictionary wouldn't keep it from the person minded to look. No, he wanted his report to be seen by those who strive for freedom through technology. Not unlike the members of a certain distinguished engineering collective, I believe their motto was freedom through technology or some such. I guess that one. <laughs> You two, round up as many magitech terminals as you can find and bring them to the workshop. Right away, chief! Things are about to get very busy. Lucky we had your help, you to help, eh? Suffice to say, I shall be of whatever help I can. Hmm. All these magic terminals won't come cheap. Ah, shut up, Tataru. Some things you shouldn't put a price on. We're getting there, Brilliant. One step at a time. As with our first foray into the Labyrinth of the Ancients, we seek to venture into the unknown. And in order to succeed, we require not only knowledge and preparation, but daring besides. Just like old times, which was over a year ago for me. Dot, dot, dot. Right. While Grahatia and I configure the terminals, I want to re the rest of you to procure supplies. Namely, ceruleum to fuel the, t the terminals and ice shards to keep them cool. The more we have of both, the better. Leave the ice shards to me. I'll round up some adventurers and go on a gathering spree. In that case, I'll trust Beryllian and Alizé with the Ceruleum. Here's a promissory note for each of you. Take them to the Skysteel Manufactory in Ishgard and the Ceruleum Processing Plant in Thanalan. The people there will give you what you need. Yours is well-known face in the Holy See, I believe. If it's all the same to you, I'll head to Thanalan. All right. Let's head up to the Sky Steel Manufactory, and I think it's time for a break. But first, let me go ahead and get on over. Let me get over there. Talk to Formolt and get the stuff that Sid gave us the note for. You stand in the Sky Steel Manufactory. What is it you require? Want your stuff, man? Sid says, give it. So you are here after Ceruleum? In that case, please present the note to our engineer at the airship landing. He shall be glad to assist you. Okay.
really like this uh, weapon. I'm glad I took the time to do my AR relic for this. Sir William, you've come to the right man. Fair warning, though. The price has been shot up to account for the uncertainty with the Empire. So I hope you've got the coin. Well, I've got this note from Sid. Let's just give it to me. Well, now, a promissory note from the Ironworks. Don't see many of these. Not that, that, not that it's a problem. It's as good as gold to me. Haven't seen Emmerich in a while. After the disappointment of not seeing you in Alamigo, what good fortune to chance upon you here of all places. I guess he's just getting back. As you may have heard, the Allied nations are making a renewed effort to address the primal problem. To that end, have I invited the chieftain of the Vanu to Ishgard, that we might together plot a course. Since the war with the Empire appears to be nearing its conclusion, I would also like to call upon Estinian's lance. Alas, he is, as ever, a difficult man to find. Of course he is. I am He's a Stinian. He recently paid a visit to the Rising Stones. Should he happen to do so again, be sure to pass on my regards, won't you? But tell me, what business brings you to our fair city this day? A cure for tempering. You never cease to amaze me. Until now, our only hope has been prevention, our every failure irrevocable. But this, this would rewrite the rules of engagement. It could end the cycle of bloodshed. Very well. You shall have all the ceruleum we can provide, and an airship with which to transport it. Well, that's useful. Always nice to have friends in high places. In this matter, you may count on Ishgard's full support. Well, that was easy. Yeah, I didn't think it would be hard or anything since we had Sid Sid's note. Like, shouldn't you be excited? Or did was she taking a nap? Who would have thought Cerulean weighed so much? Oh, okay, that's right. Serves me right for being stubborn, I suppose. I should have just done what you did and accepted help. <laughs> yeah, Alisa, you really need to know when to ask for help. Good work, you two. This is all we ask for and more. Quite a lot more. Now that I look at of course, the tar is going to get more than what they need. Probably going to sell it off later. Let's 
Lord Emric, eh? And entirely by chance. <laughs> Some people have all the luck. We have also succeeded in configuring the terminals, thanks in no small part to our able assistant. <laughs> Sid's boyfriend. It's been a while, hero. You seem surprised to see me. Lest you misunderstand, I've no interest in such things as cures for tempering. Sure. But if you mean to achieve that which eluded even the storied Allegans, it seemed plain that you would require my expertise. <laughs> and so it proved. Is that not right, Garland? Sure, Nero. Sure. For all the effort it took to track you down after your latest disappearing act, you could find the cure for death, and it wouldn't be worth the trouble. <clears throat> that wasn't the only reason I agreed to cooperate. I'm reliably informed that Garland and I are destined to unravel the secrets of travel not only across dimensions, but through time. Doubtless, the lion's share of the credit lies with me. <laughs> of Nine course. Nine parts to Garland's one. And this research will be a stepping stone to that illustrious achievement. Uh, very well, then. I'll do a tenth of the work. Just the part that's beyond you. He's too. <laughs> Whatever you say, Garland. Right. If everyone's ready... Let's begin. Ah, uh, all appears to be in order. Now, we just have to wait for it to find us our magic. Why not take this opportunity to put your feet up? This may take a while. I mean, it's machine learning, so it's gonna take a long time. And then you find out you gave it bad data, so you have to start over later. That's the hardest part about all that, is getting good data. It's overloading. Of course it is. She, she won't last much longer. <laughs> uh, we'll have to shut it down. I bet they didn't save their work. Wait, we're close. So very close. Oh. Well, this is going swimmingly. Please, a moment longer, I beg you. There. And first of all, blows up. I was able to memorize the magic before of it faded. Of course he did. It still needs to be put to the proof, but I believe we have our cure. Of course he did. It's just as well. She'll never run again. <laughs> The fault is mine. I'm sorry. Don't be. It may fall short of dimension hopping, but a cure for tempering is not to be sniffed at. This, my friend, is a world-changing discovery. One we're proud to have had a hand in. 
A few Magitech terminals are a pittance to pay. Thank you. Well, we've done what we can. The rest is up to you. Of course it is. It always is. Now where are we headed? Grahatia's got a put it down to paper and then we gotta like apply it and test it and stuff so where were we that was re reviving the legacy okay we're gonna do the next one for sure so we finally have it the cure for tempering all that remains is to put it to use i shall be praying for your success on the front lines in the end, we didn't have to pay for the terminals, which is great for us, but I can't help but feel for my counterpart at the, on the ironworks. Alas, the ironworks crew couldn't linger longer. Far too much to do. Yet brief, though their time to get our time together was, it was bloody good to see them. Forget us not. Elise has only one thing on her mind. At long last, we have our cure. In theory, at any rate, we cannot be certain until such time as we put it to the proof, but I am quietly confident. Well, if we're to test it on someone, I suggest Gabu. His symptoms are relatively mild. It'll be fine, I'm sure of it, as long as we exercise due caution. Let's be optimistic this time. Yes, as long as we exercise due caution, it will be fine. Except that doesn't isn't what I said, but okay. Without further ado, then let us make for Limza. We've got we've kept Gabu waiting long enough. I don't think he's tempered. I think he's tempered more from Limza and the people there rather than Titan. I doubt I could contribute much towards what comes next, so I shall cheer. I shall cheer you on from afar. Best of luck with the treatment. We'll be praying for your success. All right, let's head on over to Limza. All right, let's get out of here before we see any sus conversations. All right, Alize. Talk to Grah to you first. Tis plain, Alize is very fond of Gabu. To the extent that I have a hand in it, I shall do all in my power to bring him back. Well, this is the moment of truth. I'll have our host bring Gabu to us at once. Well, let's see how this plays out. Are we gonna find an actual cure for tempering, or are we gonna just cause more problems? Apologies for the wait. Gabu, have you been good? Dot dot. Still no change, I'm afraid. He just stands there in silence until we move him. It's all right now. We're going to help you get better. Oh, hello. Fancy meeting you here. That's right, they were supposed to be in Limsa. Alphano, you stole her. I thought you were attending to primal matters. Yeah, in Limsa. We were, and came here for a meeting on the subject. Certain pirate factions did not deign to attend, however, and it was cancelled. We had resigned ourselves to having wasted a journey when we chanced to espy you. Could it be that there has been progress with the treatment?
using Magitech terminals to formulate the solution. I would never have contemplated such an approach. Because you're a book nerd, not a computer nerd. So this new magic, adapted from memory transference, would be used to purge the subject of their fanatical faith, while Angelo would be responsible for reanimating the ether of their soul. Hmm. Yet I wonder at the practicalities. If one were to reanimate the soul first, it would only serve to exacerbate the tempering. Conversely, a stagnant soul would not respond to the effects of the magic. Would both need to be performed simultaneously? Ah, nothing escapes Master Matoya's inquiring eye. As you say, both must be carried out simultaneously. And thus, I propose to imbue Angelo with a tempering treatment in much the same manner as I did the spirit vessels. Time to summon the little piggy again. By doing so, we also spare Graha the trouble of casting spell after spell. It's really rather efficient. Be that as it may, certain difficulties are unavoidable. The imbuing process will still require no small amount of ether. And, as I can no longer draw upon the Crystal Tower's stores of energy, I will be compelled to rely on those of others. Oh no, where is well, he going to find people to do that? Be glad to assist. As would I. Since the resumption of our duties, it has been naught but stuffy meetings. And I have ample ether to spare. Excellent. With your permission, then, let us begin. Right in the middle of the city? Are you sure we should do this right here? And that the uh, Maelstrom guards just standing there like, what the heck are these people doing? Yes, this will do. And now, it's my turn. What the heck are they doing over there? Done. No small amount indeed. Oh. Well, we seek to go where even the Allegans did not. It was never like to be easy. The rest is up to you, Alize. The treatment itself will take time and focus, so we will need a quiet room. I'm sure our hosts can spare one. I will go with her. It may be a while before we return, so I would ask for your patience and your faith. We'll bring Gabu back. You see if we don't. Twould seem our part is played. Let us find a place to recuperate while we wait for news. Well. Alizé will succeed. I am certain of it. We need to have faith. Well, this seems to be as good a spot in any to have a rest.
For years, Eorzea has labored to find a solution to the primal problem, without success. Any hope that tempering could be reversed faded long ago. I myself had given it up as impossible. Given up on the tempered and the light corrupted alike. They were problems to be tolerated, or else eliminated, I believed. And to think otherwise was pure naivety. Childishness, even. But Alizé refused to give up. She struggled and she struggled. And her efforts were rewarded with a way to bring back Halric. And now countless others may no longer be beyond salvation. However much we bicker, I have the greatest respect for my sister. Had I half her stubbornness, nay, her unwillingness to accept the status quo, I would be a far better person. A far better scion. I like how both of them are so different, and yet they both look up to the parts that... They, they both like the part of the other that they don't have they complement each other well because she's more the action and stubbornness and he's more of the pol politics and uh like more mind mind stuff well if it's any consolation she's in awe of your work and don't tell me tell her <laughs> either one's gonna embarrass him She told you of my graduation thesis. How very embarrassing. <laughs> Nonetheless, it is comforting and not a little surprising to hear that I'm still capable of impressing my sister. On the rare occasions I'm not annoying her, that is. Ah, that's very rare. Oh, she looks like she's done. Alize, are you all right? The treatment. Did it work? Oh, I'm so glad to see you all. Delighted, happy, glad. Wait, it like just hundred percent worked? Expected a little bit different outcome, but okay. All this time, my mind was filled with thoughts of Great Father Titan. But I never forgot about mother and father. Always, they were in my heart. Constantly, ever, always. So I tried to focus on their faces. Theirs and yours. Alize's and everyone's. And I found that I could remember. One thing, then another, and another. Did they ever have his voice in the heavens word? I don't remember. Your hopes reached Gabu. They helped him to hold on. I'm so proud of you, Gabu. I couldn't have done it without you, Alize. Can you help the others too? Cure them, heal them, help them? Yes, we can. All of them. And take a lot of ether. I mean, she was like stumbling after um, helping one person. Without wishing to dampen the mood, I feel compelled to add certain caveats regarding the viability of the treatment for general use. As you know, reversing the effects of tempering demands a profuse amount of ether. Yeah. And while Alize was able to heal Gabu alone, I fear the same will not be true for those who exhibit more 
Advanced. That's true. He was supposed to be a mild case. Moreover, the treatment's effects are limited to the soul. It offers no succor to those whose very flesh has been altered through prolonged exposure to a primal's influence. Yeah, they've started to transform. We can't do much. That we cannot save everyone. Maybe we can't, or maybe we can. No one gave us a hope of saving Gabu, and yet here we are. We must find a way to treat as many as possible. Then, the next logical step would be to produce a veritable army of porkses, would it not? Granted, it seemed a simple enough process in the first, but I suspect it will be different here in the source. Not that I am any authority, of course. Oh, let's go talk to Becca Lug. I mean, we can go back. Yet there is an authority on familiars to whom oh. we may grudgingly oh, yeah. turn. She's stubborn, haughty, eccentric, irascible, laconic, annoying. And don't talk to yourself about, to talk about yourself like Master that. And her name is Master Matoya, the real one. And she told some people would say the same thing about you. <laughs> I have to go now, Gabu, but the people here will look after you, all right? And I promise to come and visit you again soon. All right. Thank you, Alizé. Thank you. That was good.